we were talking about mediation and arbitration, so let me just go and address that real quick. When I was, um, when, when my daughters, before they started college, I was an arbitrator. My decision was binding. When they got to college, all of a sudden I became a mediator. They didn't have to listen to my decision. They could do what they wanted to. I could make my suggestion, but they could do what I wanted, they wanted to. That's the difference between mediation and arbitration. Arbitration is binding. There's no appeal. You don't go to the Court of Civil Appeals or the Alabama Supreme Court. The arbitrator's decision is final. It costs money. Unlike me, I guess it costs me money to raise the children. It costs you money to hire an arbitrator. Maybe not with regard to the board, but, with, but in the legal setting it does. And arbitrators are expensive. Then you have to pay the arbitration fee, which is also expensive. So it's nothing's free there. So I'm going to start off with that premise. Mediators are lawyers too, like arbitrators. They're expensive. Their <coughs> rates are sometimes $450 to $500 an hour. An hour. And mediation can last all day. And you may not get anywhere with it because mediation is not binding. Mediation is just simply attempting to settle a claim or dispute. And parties don't have to agree to it. But you do have to agree to one thing. It's the right to check at the end of the day to the mediator and to your attorney who's there. Arbitrators, on the other hand, is much like a court, except you don't have a jury and you don't have an appellate right. And you have an arbitrator, it could be a panel of three, it could be one, who makes the decision. You have to pay him to make a decision, even if you don't like the decision. <coughs> And you've also got to pay the cost through my like, AAA because under the old contract, the rules were we had to follow the commercial rules of arbitration organized by the American Arbitration Association, AAA. And just getting that file is thousands of dollars. I mean, they'd, they'd send, AAA would send me a, an invoice just to sign up with them before we even got the arbitrator of $2,500. My client would have to pay that to use their services to arbitrate a case. The other thing about arbitration as opposed to court of law is, in addition to no appellate rights, is there's not a right of dismissal. You've heard of summary judgments or motions to dismiss or motions for summary judgments. Arbitrators don't entertain those because they make the decision. They want to hear all the evidence and then they'll make the final decision. They're not going to grant an early dismissal of the case. So what does that mean? That means you go through the process a discovery like you do in a trial, and discovery is simply written questions or requests, then you've got depositions, which is none other than the other lawyer getting to ask you questions in front of a court reporter. All that still exists. All that costs money. So at the end of the day, arbitration is not much quicker than a, than a trial, and it's a lot more expensive, and you have to pay for it. So that's something to keep in mind when you look at the difference between arbitration in a consumer standpoint and arbitration in a professional standpoint. Because I, as I understand it, y'all's arbitrators are free, aren't they? They're realtors, yes. Sir. Yeah, they're real, and they, they arbitrate the matter. So it's, and you don't, they typically don't have lawyers involved, if I understand. Right. Unless <coughs> the party asks for one. Right. So you, you look at those kind of things and evaluate. Uh, the also, the, the difference in a professional arbitration as opposed to consumer arbitration is professional you, I would much, if I was going before an arbitrator, I'd much <coughs> want to have an arbitrator with a, if, if I had a dispute with another lawyer, who was a lawyer who understood. Okay, when you're doing going between on a consumer side, you, your arbitrator is not a realtor. He's a lawyer, and that's it. He doesn't know what you guys do for a living. I'm not a proponent of arbitration except in certain circumstances, and those happen to be in. in, in and I represent an agent when the venue is very bad, and that means where the, the, the area of the case is going to be. Um, and, and that's on a county by county basis. Okay, so we, we took, answering the question about mediation, we took out of the old contract the mandatory mediation and arbitration provisions. And here's why, is because it was, it was mandatory in the sense that if someone filed a complaint against you as a realtor, you got your lawyer, you would have to first go to, through your E&O carrier typically, you'd first have to go to mandatory mediation where you would go before a mediator who couldn't make a final decision but would recommend a settlement. And the settlement's never going to be, uh, you don't have a claim, you need to go away. It's always going to be, you got to pay some money if you want them to go away. And that's the only way mediation is going to be successful is somebody's got to pay money <coughs> in a civil context. 
It's never, oh, you're right, I'm sorry I made a mistake, I should never sue you to begin with, I'm just going to drop my claim and go about my business. That's never happens. So you're unsuccessful at mandatory mediation. It means you've already had to pay money for your lawyer, and typically, I guess, Tommy heard y'all have got a uh, deductible of some sort. It may range from $2,500 to $5,000 that you have to pay before <clears throat> insurance even kicks in. So y'all got to pay that. That gets that. That's an expense that's incurred on a process that's not going to work out 99% of the time at this level. So then you have to go to mandatory arbitration. So there we go. We got to pay an arbitrator. We got to pay the AAA. American Arbitration Association, we've got to pay an arbitrator and then we go through the discovery process which is identical to the discovery process you have in a court of law. Written discovery is interrogatories where they get to ask you questions and you've got to answer them or they say give me all your queens like you're playing go fish here, I want all your, I want all your documents, you know those sorts of things and then finally depositions and then you go to arbitration. The difference in trial, in, in the court of law, is as a defendant, you would have a chance for a motion for summary judgment, which means that if they can't prove their case, the judge should dismiss the case before it even goes to a jury. And arbitration, it doesn't exist because, like I said, the arbitrator makes the decision. In the, in the courtroom, the trial judge doesn't make the decision, the jury makes the ultimate decision, but the judge can dismiss the case before it gets to trial. You've heard of, of in criminal cases, you go before a judge on a dismissal and they say, well, there's not enough probable cause, there's not, it's not enough evidence to warrant an indictment, there's not enough evidence to allow this to go to a jury. Same thing on the civil case. If somebody made a claim against you, for example, for misrepresentation of a material fact, fraud in other words, and, you, and they said you misrepresented the condition of the house, well, the first thing I'm going to do when I take their deposition is go over the contract with them where they disclaim reliance on any <coughs> representations. Well, they say, I'm not relying on the realtor to determine the condition of the property. That's the first thing I'm going to use in the deposition. That, if, when the judge looks at that and says, well, they admitted to signing the contract, they admitted the opportunity to read, they initialed it, they disclaimed any reliance on the realtor, so how can they possibly have the fraud claim? He'll dismiss it. It'll never get to a jury. That's why I like, from my standpoint, having a, a trial, a court, as opposed to arbitration or mediation. We're more likely than not going to win at this level, at trial court level, than the arbitration level. And if we don't win, and there's a miscarriage of justice or a, a penalty issue that comes up, I get to appeal to the Alabama Supreme Court or the Court of Civil Appeals. And so I've got avenues there to protect you. So from my standpoint, answering the question, uh, arbitration and mediation I do not think are appropriate in this type of setting. We went through that and discussed all of that. Um, and and elected to take it out of there. 